all right guys so today, today we're gonna talk about chapter six of john let me give you a brief overview so chapter six of john just goes over how goes with the principles that jesus spoke about about pruning the tree Those that are not pruned they're thrown into the fire they're cut off completely and thrown into the fire well in john chapter six jesus thins down the herd he separates those from who superficially believe from those who genuinely believe and put their works on their faith put your money basically in other words put your money where your mouth is if you love me this is what this is what jesus said if you love me then you don't obey my commandments it's not about trying harder effort but god sees those that not only profess but are also passionate about getting to know him because those that genuinely desire the heart of god he sees those who desire god's heart is those that he gives to jesus in other words those that he knows are after his heart or at one point in their lives will be it can be like in a few years from now it can be tomorrow it can be at some point in the future but god knows who's going to give him his heart and those are the ones that he gives to jesus so verse 22 it says here the next day the crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat and you realize that Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, where did you, when did you get here? Verse 22. The next day that the crowd had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat and they realized that Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found on the other side of the lake and asked, they found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, you want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. So Jesus is here rebuking the other disciples because Jesus did not only have 12 disciples, he had about 70 and th those that were not the 12 in other words the other ones that were following him they followed him because jesus in the earlier in this chapter had look uh sorry i went too far out look, look, look. the first the first verses in the same chapter uh jesus feeds the five thousand so this is where he fed the five thousand he multiplied the fish and you know like like when people get fed, they're hungry and they follow, they go where there's food, right? So in, in, in essence, this is what was happening here. Jesus, he, he couldn't discern their motives. And he says right here, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because I understood the miraculous signs. In other words, you have other motives and those motives don't even involve wanting to be with me. Those motives didn't involve seeking after the will of God. The, the motives that you have is only one-sided it's only one benefits you just because i fed you you want to you you're you're here be just because i fed you you're not here because you want to do the will of my father right that's basically what he's saying and then he goes on in verse 27 but don't be so concerned about perishable things like food spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the son of man which is jesus can give you in other words, you why are you focusing on earthly things? Why are you focusing on things that pass away at some point? Those things don't matter. Everything that's here on the earth is like a cardboard paper version of what's in heaven. The nicest things here on the earth are only a cardboard version of what's in heaven, right? When you when you read the book of Exodus, uh, God had instructed Moses how to build the tent where His presence would dwell. Well, in heaven, there's there's heavenly tents. But they're not made out of cloth or they're not made of, of linen, none of that. They're made from glorious things, glorious things that we can't even imagine, right? But there's is it's like a reflection. And that's what it says in Corinthians also. Paul says that this right here, we only see like a partial reflection of what's in heaven, right? So everything that's that's on the earth is, is like a paper, cardboard, cheap version of of what's in heaven of the glorious things of of the things of of uh, of god verse 27 that the son of man can give you for god the father has given me the seal of his approval in other words jesus had the authority given to him by god because he is god himself verse 20 they replied we want to perform god's works too what should we do jesus told them this is the only work god wants from you believe in the one he has sent in other words trust me but this is the thing guys anybody can say oh i believe in jesus or oh i'm a christian i believe in jesus but when somebody is truly a believer 
they'll do what Jesus commanded because they sincerely put their trust in him. They would repent automatically. Repentance would be automatic. They'd be like, no question about it. I don't agree with sin. Two, they would turn to Christ and submit to Christ and they would at least intend on following the will of God, of being more like Jesus. They'll be very intentional about living like Jesus lived, right? Not just by words. That's what it really means to sincerely believe in Jesus. When you want to live like Jesus lived and when you want to do what he did, when you have a sincere love for him, that is genuine belief in, in Jesus. A superficial belief is is saying i go to church on sundays and i i go to church because my parents take me or because my parents go to this church so therefore i am what they are right and it's not the way it works right when you walk like christ that's when you know that your faith is genuine when you put your faith to the test and you see that your faith is genuine you walk like jesus dude you you're intentional doesn't mean you're always going to succeed doesn't mean you're always going to get it right but you're intentional about living like jesus lived when you're intentional about seeking the will of god in your life when you're intentional about self-crucifixion you're crucifying the flesh the sinful nature that's that's when you know that you're walking like jesus walked believe in the one he has sent sincerely verse 30 the answer show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you what can you do after all our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness the scripture says moses gave them bread from heaven to eat then Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven. My father did. Now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So, guys, let's talk about it. What is the purpose of bread? Purpose of The purpose of bread is to feed you because you go hungry. You need food to survive. God gave them life. God gave God provided food in the desert for the Israelites when they when, when they left Egypt. They had they, at some point they ran out of food, and they asked God for food, and God gave them manna. Manna is like like grain, like a, like a form of grain, right? And He also sent them quail, which is like a form of bird that they would hunt, right? In other words, God gave them the means to eat. But what think about it like this: the essence of bread. What does it do? It feeds you. It nourishes you. It keeps you alive right here jesus is referring to himself as a living as a bread of life the one who keeps you alive in other words your source of life jesus is referring to himself as the source of life who gives life to the world that's what it says in the verse and he's saying the bread the physical bread that your ancestors ate is just like a form like a like a like the natural form of of eating bread sure yeah you buy a loaf of bread and you eat and you're full right but he's referring to himself as the true bread as in like the original bread of where the entire concept came from the one that sustains life are you understanding what i'm saying so what we eat is just like a like a cardboard not literal cardboard but like a cardboard like a paper version of the real thing but this refers to spirit in, in a spiritual sense in, in in a heavenly sense the real bread the real bread of life that keeps you and sustains you later on we're going to talk about how how when Jesus told the disciples to eat his flesh and drink his blood, the other ones, that the other 70 that we discussed about earlier, they deserted him. But I'm, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Let's keep reading. Verse 34. Sir, they replied, give us that bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me even though you have seen me. Isn't that incredible, guys? That they had God in front of them and they still didn't believe him. They did all these miraculous signs. Think about it, guys. It baffles me how in the same chapter, Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And they still were asking for another sign. They're like, oh, that wasn't enough. Oh, yeah, sure. You multiplied two, two, uh, two fishes and five loaves of bread for 5,000 people. And that still is not that's that's not a miraculous sign to them, guys. That's incredible, guys. And that's how cold-hearted they were. <laughs> that's how cold their hearts were. That's how that's how that's how blind they were. They were not willing to believe. They didn't want to believe. They're like, we know that you've done all this stuff, but we still don't believe in you. Show us something else. But the thing is, they were always going to give Jesus the runaround. They you could you could bring down fire from heaven, and they still probably would not have believed. You could have done extremely powerful miracles in front of these kind of people and they still would have said show us another sign that's not enough in other words they were dictated by their flesh that's what the flesh does 
All the flesh does is gives you the runaround. You're chasing your own tail. 